So do you have any advice for a young violinist who is looking for their first nicer instrument? Do they really need to sell a body part for it? Or, or, yeah. is, it, or is it possible to get a nice instrument for something affordable? Um, oh, it's definitely possible to get mm -hmm. an instrument at an affordable price. Mm -hmm. um, I know some of these older Italian mm -hmm. instruments are very, very far out of reach for almost any musician. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, there are a lot of very, very fine instruments um, that work well in anybody's budget. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of modern instruments mm -hmm. um, fill that, that need very well. Um, I think the main, main thing that I would recommend is to settle on your budget first. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a hard, hard thing to have to look at or admit, but um, knowing what your, your price range is is very important. And mm -hmm. don't look at things outside of your, don't look at things that are too expensive <laughs> that you can't afford. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're lucky enough to get um, a, a loan or um, like a benefactor who will buy an instrument for you, that is amazing. But um, <laughs> Yeah, otherwise I would say know your budget, um, talk to your teacher, talk to your friends, um, try their instruments maybe before you even start shopping around at shops is, mm -hmm. yeah, like swap instruments with your stand partner and, and try it and see, um, see what you like in other people's instruments, um, play a, a bunch of them. <laughs> um, even if yeah. you're going into shops, play a bunch of them. Don't be afraid to spend some time with them. Um, if you have a teacher, um, bring a couple of instruments that you like to your teacher. Um, I would say also the other thing is try to, try to buy something that you know you can grow into. You're not kind of maxing out right away when you buy it, if that makes sense. Um, Elaborate on that. Um, so I am an amateur violinist, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I know that, uh, so I played violin through high school and college, but mm -hmm. there was um, a moment, or there was a time in college where I was actually practicing, <laughs> and I was actually <laughs> getting better. Um, and I felt like I'd really reached the limit of what my instrument mm. could do for me. Okay. Um, so uh, my suggestion, my advice is to to buy something that that you feel like there's maybe more in the instrument than you're maybe able to get out right now. It's mm -hmm. something that you kind of have a sense of its potential, but um, yeah, something to kind of grow into or right. grow with. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And there's definitely, there's always something within your price range. There's, there's always something within yeah. your price range. Yeah. I, I feel like younger students sometimes, especially maybe younger students, they get so carried away with the extravagant pricing of older instruments that, you know, guys are modern makers. They're really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, um, there are so, so many violins. Mm -hmm. um, there's a violin for any budget. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, here at Teresio, we sell instruments. I mean, instruments in our auction, you know, sell for a couple hundred dollars. They're not always playable necessarily. Maybe they're, you know, purchased by a luthier who's going to fix them up. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, we, we sell instruments in the hundreds of dollars into the millions of dollars. So, right. um, yeah, there's, there's a fiddle for everyone. <laughs> What do you learn from working with musicians? Or I can say better, what, what should we be learning from you as well? I learn a lot from my clients. Um, one of the things that I am always so thrilled to continue seeing and continue learning about is different playing styles mm -hmm. and um, just watching people play um, teaches me so much. Um, teaches me so much about them as a player, but also can teach me how how they're playing their instrument, but then also maybe if something isn't working, how the instrument is kind of resisting that. Or I guess a better way to put it is that I spend a lot of time watching players start notes. And <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, like yeah. start notes. Mm -hmm. and, and with that, you can tell so much. You can, you can tell if, um, like if the bow is skating before it actually engages, that, that tells you that how responsive mm -hmm. the instrument is. If somebody doesn't want to play near the bridge, um, if they kind of tend towards a, a certain range in that bridge to fingerboard area, um, that can tell you that maybe the instrument isn't very playable at the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, the, if, they have to, if they have to vibrate a lot to actually kind of get the sound to, to keep moving, um, it tells me that the instrument isn't as resonant as it could be. Um, I spend a, yeah, spend a lot of time watching wow. um, 
the, the point of bow contact on the string. Wow. Yeah. I guess when, when we play our instruments, we don't think about all of these specific things. As we're more just completely going on instinct and mm -hmm. just finding the best point to, to create the best sound. Mm -hmm. and, and you're actually, you can actually tell what those things are. That's, that's really, that's really cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. So as you're playing, you just, mm -hmm. you instinctively ad adapt, mm -hmm. right? Right. Like you start and it's like, Oh no, it doesn't work. Okay. Let me play a little farther away from the bridge, but mm -hmm. you don't go through that whole mental process. process. You just yeah. pull away a little bit and keep going. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then, you know, if you bring your violin in and mm -hmm. again, that's kind of where it's like, you know, something's wrong, but you can't quite put it into words. Mm -hmm. It's my, um, my job to sort of figure out, what's not working and mm -hmm. how, to, how to make it work. As far as what musicians can learn from me or what I, what I hope they learn is, um, again, kind of how, how their instrument works. I, mm -hmm. I like describing, um, when I'm giving my recommendations for what we should do, I like explaining why. I like explaining kind of the whole system of, of the violin, the bridge, string, neck, sound post, tailpiece, arch, Chin rest, peg system, like <laughs> it's all together. It's all a single system with mm -hmm. all these little variables that are are constantly affecting each other. So, um, I, yeah, I, I try to help um, pinpoint exactly what's going on, um, explain what we can do to make it better, and then, um, yeah, kind of explain why I think that's going to help. I also, I hope that. Um, when musicians do bring their instruments in, that they, they realize how important it is to have um, regular checkups. Um, mm. That you know you might have seams open <laughs> that, you, yeah. that you don't know. Um, <laughs> you might have like really high or really low string heights and mm -hmm. kind of didn't know because you've just been adapting to them. So I think it's also important to um, to I also try to advocate to musicians that they bring in their instruments for regular checkups, cleanings. Um, just to maintain, maintain these things. It's like a, it's like a human being. We need our checkups too, mm -hmm. to keep everything running smoothly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is, yeah, it's definitely been like into a doctor's office in here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll walk in, I'll say, okay, like, tell me why you're here. So it's like, oh, it's like, I feel like I'm at the doctor's. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And in some cases it's like the less you see me, the better, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> um, but also come in for, yeah, for and your regular. Yeah. <laughs>